The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. After that uh, wonderful Mozart overture with Marriage of Figaro, we're looking at, uh, I'm sitting in for the hour, Larry Pesavento's hour. We want to go through a lot of different things, uh, stuff that I didn't get to in my Tiger Technicians hour uh, this past hour. So, here we go. So the Dow is up 152 at 31,912. Not bad action when you've got Fed speak coming on this afternoon. But basically, I don't, I'm not sure what Powell is going to say that really could shake the market. Of course, he could say anything. But he, he's, he's, everything that they're talking about has been in, in play. If the market wants to go up, and it's not spectacular. Look, the market's gone from 29,653, the Dow that is, uh, to 32,219. Uh, it's not even 3,000 points, and it's taken ages from the middle of June. Yeah, we're at the end of July. Um, it's a, a good daily move, but the weekly chart, it's not even as good as many of the other big spikes to the upside that then failed when they hit the 200, uh, hit the 14 period exponential moving average. So let's just say this is really good action considering what's going on right now. If you're looking at the futures, the E-mini futures, you've just made a leg D, gone to a peak D in the, uh, and I have to put a down arrow, in the one minute chart, and it's gone to a leg F in the, 10-minute chart and a beautiful cup formation uh, there, up or there. Uh, this is called the Chapman Wave cup and ladle formation where it takes out the previous high before it goes to a leg D and then it pulls back and tests the breakout level and then goes on. At this particular point, I suspect that the high so far, 3982.00, round number high, uh, I'd said earlier on when we hit 3774, that I thought that we were close to some kind of a high for the day. Usually the market starts to pull back. If it's up as we're going into Fed speak, it starts to ameliorate. It comes down to almost unchanged. And if it's down sharply, it comes back to almost unchanged when the Fed speak comes. And then it breaks out to its whatever it wants to do. Now, this particular point, I think we've made a very short-term top. And we'll see what happens. Key support is right at 39.66, the 200 period exponential moving average, and we're at 39.74. So let's just get that out the way. Now we can do a whole bunch of things we wanted to talk about. Bonds. A lot of people have been asking me, what about bonds? What are the bonds saying? Well, if you look at the bonds, they have a really nice discussion this morning uh, between Teddy Kegstad and Tommy O'Brien in his market kickoff, Tommy's market kickoff show at nine. Great show. I wish you had a chance to, to listen to it. Um, well, uh, looking at the bonds, as far as I can see, this is a peak D. In the Chapman Wave methodology, you try to see what happens at a peak D. Well, this is the quickest that bonds have gone to a peak D, pull back, and they made another quick a leg D to the upside is a leg D until the end of the day because the daily chart. But unless it can take out the high that was made yesterday of 143 point and 11 30 seconds in the continuous contract, this is going to be a peak D. We'll see what happens after the Fed speak. But if you look at the weekly chart, the MACD is turned up. The stochastic is improving a lot. It's at 66%. The uh, We've got the on-balance volume is the blue line is good. It's really it's a little overbought in the uh, in the daily chart, and that fourth highest peak A B C D. That fourth highest peak D is where we expect. Remember, it's got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D. I've drawn those in right here. I have a different way of looking at that. Look at the gray and then the green, and now I can do it again. I'll make it a different color. Um, I, I love this kind of pattern. I've used it for years. I didn't know it actually had titles, but I call it Chapman Wave one-to-one -one expansion. It has to do that in the same angle, same number of bars. I'm just going to make it pink for now, and I'll make it pink, and I'll make it faded, transparent. It's got a 70%. There it is. And look, you go from there to there. It's gone almost to the same level, but it's taken a lot more time. It's the third one. Usually the third, the third time... It's not exact at all. So I'm watching this very closely, and I'm saying that there is a chance 
that in the shorter term, going into the first week of August, so that will be going into the 5th of August, that's next week, a Friday week, if 144 is touched, that's going to tell us that yields, uh, T and X dot X, is, this is a 10-year T note yield, that yields can continue down since the peak D. Remember the fourth highest peak, peak D in the chaff wave? That's where other things can happen. Wow, did other things happen? You went to 3483 in the TNX. Uh, that's on the 14th of June. And yesterday we're down at 27. I mean, that's 3.4 down to 2.7. That, that, I mean, that's huge. Of course, look at the steepness on the way up. It's taken a lot of time. It's taken time and price to the downside. So that's just saying to me, this is exactly where, and if you're looking at the V-shaped pattern right here, we went one, two, three weeks to the upside and one, two, three, four, five, six, six to the downside. So there's a little bit of a lopsided A Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down pattern here. But what, what is most important is that the trend, oh, I guess I'm going to have to show that. I showed it yesterday. I'll do it again today. People had asked me about it. Uh, I'm going to show this is the black background chart. 30-year is white. At the 10-year yield, uh, T and X is brown. The cyan is the five-year T note yield. And you'll see it right here. Look at that big sell-off in the weekly chart from a peak F in the six highest peak in the chap wave methodology look what happened 34.72 3.472 and yeah we are down at 29.99 uh, that, that's a big move down and the weekly chart says yes you've got this kind of big cup maybe this is a, a, a cup and handle not one of my favorite patterns at all uh, yes you can time it well but my favorite pattern is the chap wave cup and ladle it's my own unique one where you break out in a leg C or a D above the left side high. That's usually fabulous to go higher. Um, but in the meantime, look how you've pulled back. Look at the tenure and how it's pulled back. So that's just saying to me that yields at this particular point, um, they went higher. And this is maybe talking a little bit to the deflationary aspect. I'm going I'm to go through the different commodities in a moment. So let's make it as simple as possible. Um, the yields have helped the global timber and forestry ETF just a little bit, and that goes together with copper, and we looked at them, and both of them are still very weak. But they are holding, it is holding the 200-period moving average. That's a good sign. But look at this, the Philadelphia Housing Index with all the stuff about slowdowns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm impressed with this rally in the shorter term in the Philadelphia Housing Index, but it does correspond to the weeks that we've come down in yields. So this is going to be important for the housing index, going to be important for a number of other factors. But in the meantime, I'm going to give you levels. Let me get out of this because I, uh, I don't need to have it up right now. I exit, close workspace, yes, save everything, yes, to all. There we go. So now what we're looking at is within the context of the yields, this peak F, and I have to wait for Friday. But I might have to put a down arrow to say that the 10 year is actually in a sell signal. Maybe if it goes down to the 2630 area, 2580, it becomes a sell mode. Yields going down? Is that why the market's running? Because a lot of the Fed's work has been done. I'm not sure about that because I'm thinking about inventories that I'm hearing tons of inventory uh, not being sold. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Preservento's hour, and we're going to discuss the commodities as soon as I reach here. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 We have made that peak, Dean. The one-minute chart of the E-mini is trying to rally. It could uh, turn into an arch formation. I'll draw it in. There's always two fighting patterns, up or down. In this case, it's the arch formation and not really a cup formation. I'll, I'll draw it because it's stalled and it hasn't really got the cup pattern. I usually say sine wave, up or down, arch or cup, and they just fight amongst one another. I suspect that this is going to be a peak after in the 10-minute chart. And then we'll have to see what happens after that. Let's go on. So, yeah, we go. The questions came in. Um, so the TNX, to make it as simple as possible, if it starts to break under 2650, 2.650 in the next couple of days, that says there's a really good chance the yields are going to go even lower rather than higher. And that's going to be a little bit of a surprise. And if it suddenly spikes and it fills in the gap and goes above 29 in the next couple of days, 2.9, that is something else and we'll have to deal with it. Okay, so the questions came in about the dollar, Basil's dollar, because we've been long since 2018, April at 90.07 via the UUP, uh, taking two little bits off, one at 96 way back when it was on its way to 102.99. Then it came back down to 89.21. We still remain long, never changed up. We never got stopped out of our UUP, still in the UUP. And now we've got a sell, just it's not even, I can't even put the down arrow yet because we haven't closed decisively underneath the 14 period exponential moving average. It's been below it a few days, but it's really holding quite well sideways. Dollars up a penny or a 0.01 at 107.22. What happens after the Fed? If it suddenly gets above 107.45 and closes above that today, that's that says it's making a U-shaped pattern. It should return to back towards the 108 level. But if it suddenly trades under 106. Point, no, 106, 105.80, 106 to 105.80. That says, you know, we're making lower lows and lower highs. There's a sell signal that's going to be a down arrow put in tomorrow at the end of the day if that happens. And then it'll probably go to a sell mode in the daily. The weekly chart is still fabulous. So I, I promised that I would look at. So here we go. Uh, actually, let me do this now. Roblox question came in. Can I look at Ro uh, Roblox? We once in it. Haven't been in for absolutely ages. So the question came in, Basil, what, what, what are you doing? Well, subscribers, what are you doing? Well, we have two positions today that are – we have all, all our positions are doing very nicely. One is up. Um, one is up. 
seven over seven percent, and the other one is up over eight percent. So, and all of them, and both of them, these two are still in, in the in the gone into the teens or low twenties. I like to have for subscribers a, a variety of price sets. We go into. We also have a. Um, we have an energy stock we got into yesterday because it is in, also in natural gas. I love natural gas uh, chart. And this is up very nicely from our entry point yesterday. Um, and we are still in our bank stock, which is doing well. And the, I'll talk about that in a moment. And the question came in about the trend gauge. The trend wave trend gauge is, is a particular, it's Richard Arms uh, Short Term Trading Index. I just use the numbers and it does. I know how it's made up, but I don't really care how it's made up. As far as I'm concerned, it just does the job for me by just certain numbers. If it's above, it means uh, uh, intraday, if it makes a, a level that is above a certain number, I say within two days, the E-mini should have a strong move to the upside. That will help the market. And if it's down below a certain number, I say the very next session, no matter how high the Dow futures are, the Dow should be down the next day. And both of them have a fantastic over 90% track record. And now what we're looking at is Roblox. This is really good action. This is probably also helping if she's still in it. Kathy Wood, not an S. It's Wood. Uh, ARK, A -R -K -K, it's up uh, 1.40 today at 44.87. So Roblox is Roblox is gaming platform, game creation, trading at 41.28. It has the rectangle pattern. You remember those of you who know my work? I talk about rectang large rectangle patterns that give you a lopsided gravy cup, not a pure cup with the left side quarrow. That means the semicircle, the quarter semicircle on the left side matches the right side. No, in this case, it's a gravy cup and it makes a lopsided move in a rectangle fashion, peak A, peak B. You can even go to a peak D right under, right on or just above the previous high and then it can pull back. And that's usually the pattern. So this is acting very well. 41.26, I suspect that the 44s is the target in the shorter term. Greg, I don't know what the question was. I just saw... Um, uh, well, nice to have you for two hours today. Could you look at Roblox for me? I'm thinking of a starter position. I have it in peak D. Well, it did do an alternate count. This is, I, I don't want to just remind me. I'll put Friday, Friday RBLX. I'll do in detail. I'll do that. I don't want to do it now. It has Chapman Wave no, um, um, notations that I need to talk about. Was this an instant restart? Is it a Chapman? Oh, a Chapman Wave flat base restart. I'm going to show you an incredible one just now. Uh, does it say that it's going to come back to the 30 level in this particular pattern? Yes, it does. But in the meantime, it could have a move up towards the 43, 44 area. So um, it's not a peak D. That was a G slash D. I have to have the alternate count on that uh, pop to the on July the 9th or 10th when it went to 44s. Then a pullback, and now it's got a Chapman Wave rectangle inside uh, by mode by signal that should go to peak A, peak B, and it's making higher highs and higher lows. So that's what I'm looking at. But treat it as a trade. Um, okay, so that was that question. Next question was, so the short-term trading index was high yesterday, and it said that the futures should see a 9 to 11-point rally that will help the market. It's obviously done that. Next question, the same question was IAI. IAI is the, this is the broker, dealer, and security ETF. We've been long since the 45 area. Uh, the day after the law of the 23rd of March of 2020, and we've tr I periodically tried to get back in for subscribers. I wanted another stock, but I decided this was a much better deal. So this is uh, IAI. It made the arch formation, made a lower low, 80.82, and then it went to 80.63, just 20 cents, 19 cents, below the previous low, no, 21 cents. And now what we're looking at is that a very sharp move above the arch pattern so we wanted to buy it at a certain point for subscribers we haven't got that level yet but um, I like the action in leg A and I like the action in the weekly because you could draw a channel right here and say it's going uh, and my absolute sincerest wishes to um, but Rolfs who used to be here I believe he's really not very well at all um, just white lightning just all of us our, our prayers are with you but um what can I say? Just uh, you're in our thoughts. And uh, look at that. You're just about to get to the chap wave inside. In fact, this is what it is. I mean, I'll do, I won't rush. We'll just do this in a slow time. This is the chap wave inside track repellent zone. 
and it could turn out to be a propellant zone. And if this is the case, then this market is going to move higher because you need the brokers to go higher. And this is saying whatever the broker mix in the, uh, of course, it's uh, Berkshire Hathaway. It has a whole bunch of things uh, within it in, in, in the um, uh, broker dealer. I, I believe we've got Berkshire Hathaway. I must check. But it's acting okay. It's not great at all in the weekly or the monthly, but the weekly is starting to improve. The Magni turned positive stochastics at 29%. But all I can say is that we've got our plan. I'm going to stick to the plan for subscribers. I don't want to change the plan. And if it gets taken out, it gets taken out. Uh, but in the meantime, in the very long term, we've got our position for what is two years now, and we're going to stay with that position. Uh, Dow's up 96, and the S&P's up 49. Let's just quickly go to this. As we're going to the break, you'll see there's that PT, there's the dreaded H. We took it out. I'll be back if you in want a to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, folks, just a quick question came in. What is the pattern that I've been talking about right now? You remember I spoke about the arch and the cup formations fighting, fighting, fighting. Well, this is the dreaded H. When the price comes down sharply and then tries to rally, and at a peak A or B, it just reverses and retests and takes out the left side low. You've got three, two to three bars in which to get back above that. And until it, unless it gets a completely new buy signal, uh, then it's kind of stuck in a range and it should not take out that arch high. So we'll see what happens here because there's the dreaded H. It took it out. This one now is two fighting patterns. This one lost. This one is now trying to succeed in the bigger picture. And we'll see what happens. There's your H pattern. It took it out. It took one, two, three, four, five, six bars to get above it. Uh, that left side low right there. And now that's a good, that's a positive. And now you're fighting again. You've made the H pattern. Now you're going to try for an arch pattern. 
he made the arch pattern. Now he's trying to make the cup formation. All right, let's see what happens there. And I still think that that F is going to stay there for a while. Peak F in the 10-minute chart. So let's get back to our story. We want to look at – I don't want to run out of time. So there was a question about CLH. That's uh, Celsius Holdings, Inc. Um, I've been following this for quite a while, trying to make a cup formation. It didn't make a lower low. It's exactly the pattern we're looking at a, a moment. There's the dreaded H within two bars. It closed above the left side high. The technical started to improve, and now it's gone from a buy signal in the weekly chart to a buy mode. But it is still way under the previous peak D. I'm always, I don't like that. I want to see... That D taken out in a leg C with a huge move to the upside. So in the meantime, it's still very positive. Daily still positive, but it's starting to slow down technically. We'll see what happens. I, would, I don't know if the question was for me, but if it hits 86.80, let's go to 87.30. In the next three, four, five days, that's really positive. I suspect it's going to chop around sideways and test 78. It's at 82 right now. Test the test the. 80 to 78 area support. Okay, next question came in. Um, so IAI, I'm just, as I said, I'm going to stick for subscribers. I'm sticking with my plan. I uh, will just say, if we, if, if we miss it, I have to uh, make a different plan. But in the meantime, I haven't changed it from yesterday. We're going to, over the last few couple of days, we, we've got it. IAI trading at 88.61. Low today is 88.48. Now, a couple of things you need to look at. So questions came in. About Exxon, I think they come out with earnings later this week. Look, it has a spectacular move. It's gone just from, even as us go to this year in the 60s, it did a high of 105.57. I drew this in, this pattern. I said, look, this pattern, you cannot ignore this pattern. This is, a, this is the Chapman Wave falling axe formation that says if you break that high, that trend line, I'll make it blue. I don't like messy charts. Let me just see if I can make this blue. Blue, and we'll make it a little thicker right there. So this is the Chapman Wave falling X formations. It's a little unusual, but it's kind of the pattern. You can go one to one to the upside, but the idea is that once it breaks above that trend line, it can go to each higher high on the left side one by one with a chance of going just under, right on, or just above the previous high. That was 104.76 July of 2012 in this lopsided cup formation as well, like a gravy cup backwards. And then you've got to be careful because it comes down and breaks halfway or it breaks halfway into that move from the top to the trend line. It could come all the way back down to the trend line. Well, it stopped with the nine-period monthly moving average, the green line at 80.97, and it's uh, trying to rally. So far, it's rallying. So I'm anticipating that there's still room for the upside in, in Exxon, but the big move, at least for now, is done and is done is more consolidation phase. And the big thing is, how does it tackle the left side high? It's gone from the 105 area down to 30. You, it, I would say that that's cut in half. No, no, no. It's cut more in half. It's cut by uh, two thirds, and it went down to the double bottom low of um, 80.69. Yeah, 80.69. Um, what I was talking about before was the move from the 104 level went down to 30, uh, under 30 into the 29s. And then it had a spectacular move up to within a point, a point, and just a fraction, um, 105.57. That's unbelievable. In leg F, that could be an alternate count because this could be a Chapman Wave instant restart. That news good stochastic is still okay at 79%. I prefer 85%. And the on balance forum is a tad toppy in the monthly chart. So this pattern here says it was so steep to the downside that there'll be strong resistance at this level of uh, a 93, 90. 91 and a half to 93 and a half should be strong resistance. But if it breaks sharply above leg, a peak B, if there's a peak B today with no new high above 91.28, and it goes into the 90, in this move now in the next three days, then I have to say the MACD and stochastic are so strong in the daily chart that it could actually extend high. And that's the reason why we did buy an oil and gas. Look at this natural gas. Pulling back today in a leg C for a possible peak C. But what a spectacular V-shaped move that is. 
Um, oh, what was it yesterday? The question came, I don't want to do that. that was the falling axe pattern. Uh, UNG, I think we were looking at. No, we weren't. Okay. Whatever it is, UNG has had a spectacular move from 18, 32.77 on the 18th of uh, June, plummets down to 18.28. Uh, and on the 30th of June, and then go spectacularly up to legs C yesterday, peak C today. It should try to get above uh, 31.52 for leg D, and then it might be a problem, a double top problem. But if it even breaks by one penny, 32.77, I have no way of counting this other than leg A. For the, for the weekly chart, and that's really positive for natural gas. So here we go. We want to look at some of the uh, grains. Uh, w, nothing to see here. It's really struggling. Wheat down four and a half. Uh, once it broke under the 200-period moving average, uh, that was it. It just it was a real – look at that. Look at this pattern. This is the Chapman Wave inside. Well, remember the Chapman Wave – Roman candle that was made on the 8th of March, and I discussed it in great detail at 13.63 and a half. And I said if it goes even for half a day below the halfway marker of this wick, lower wick, it's going to go down and retest the lows. It did that the second day. It broke it, produced another one, and upside down one, and that became a, a, a repellent for the area. And then it came all the way back. And an L50 period moving average, but it produced a rectangle formation. Say within the rectangle, there could be another rally that goes all the way to a leg C or D just under the previous high. Well, it did that over there, doji candle top, and then it came all the way back down. So wheat is in a problem. It's, it's, it's trying to form a base, but what's really interesting is that soybeans hit the 200 period moving average. Look how fant you see those notations. They're all relevant except I do every single notation by hand so they don't automatically come back when the price gets smoothed out. There's a continuous contract. So look at this. Look at the 200 period moving average, how much it was resistance for a year uh, for August to December for four months. It was four or five months. It was resistance and, and support, resistance, resistance, resistance. Then it became support. Then you had to ignore it because the nine-period moving average went above the 14 from right there. Oh, man, just look at that. From right there on the uh, 6th of December 2021. And it remained that way all the way through until it turned down right there uh, on the 30, 31st of March of 2022. Then it went back up, chop, chop, chop. And it made a double top, and it came back down. Now the 200 period moving average has become a propeller. So soybeans are acting very nicely. Uh, corn is trying to form a base on the 200 moving average. I'll be back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar. Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, so uh, the Dow's up 150, S&P's up 55. This is so, I mean, it'll be a terrible surprise if all of a sudden there's bad news because this market is anticipating a lot. I'm not complaining. Uh, now one of our positions is up 8%. Other one is up uh, woof, uh, almost 8%. Uh, this is uh, unusual. I didn't expect that. Very unpleasantly surprised, but kind of a... Uh, what, what can I say? All right. So look, corn has got this left side, right side price time match. I discussed this in great detail some time ago because we are along the DB Agricultural Fund. Still long it. We've taken a lot off. Uh, very good profits uh, from 13.77 uh, um, way back two years ago and uh, all the way up. And now we've kept some because I think it's trying to form some kind of a base here. But it's very selective. Look, um, each move. There's a left side, right side price time match, but I compared the price on the 19th of April when it was the continuous contract was a 735, round number, to where it was higher on the 29th of April at 741 and a half, that the technicals were failing. And look what happened. It kept on going down, 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 lower lows and lower highs, not always, but mostly. And then what happened is it's trying to rally and the MACD wasn't ready for it. Now the MACD is. So that just says to me that on a daily basis, um, corn, continuous contract, is suggesting that you could buy it here with the 594 is the 200-period exponential moving average. You've got to give it a little room. The low that was made yesterday of 586, probably that's kind of support that you'd have to watch. I don't know what the prices are. I don't ever trade this. So I'm just talking about the actual pattern itself says that this could become at least a buy signal that it tries to go to a buy mode by pushing above the 62, 623 and a half high of the 18th. Of, if it can close above that, that'll be very good. It'll be the first time that the left side high has been taken out on a closing basis. So that's the way I would look at it. The, the weekly chart needs a lot of room, and I would only treat this as a trade if you're looking at. Call, uh, if you're looking at uh, SB, which is sugar, which is part of this index, look at that arch formation failure, drilled H pattern way below the 200 period moving. So I don't think that the DBA is ready yet for a very strong move, but it is ready for a counter trend rally. So that's the way uh, we haven't added to it yet. I almost did today, but then I thought, you know what? We're in a position, we've got some other positions that are working really well. So that's it. So I did that, did that, did that. So that's the, the bonds I did, a crude oil. Crude oil, um, in the Chapway methodology, look, I measured the left side, right side, the high of the 11th of March at 121.46. Now that price changes because it's a continuous contract. 120.59. So that's 120.59. Oh, 0.59. And then the retest just underneath a week of the 17th of June at 118.44. Look how weak that was. You made a little V shaped pattern, uh, inverted V with the MACD double top. You made a lower uh, high 
in the stochastic, the unbalanced volume went to overbought level. And it's not saying it's a major sell signal, but what it, what it is saying is that the rectangle formation went to a peak A, then a B, and a C. It didn't go to a D, but it went in that pattern just underneath the previous high. It broke halfway into the rectangle, which says, watch out, you could test the base. Well, there are a lot of bases. The most important one will be the low of the 15th of, week of the 15th of April of 84.35. So what this is saying that on a short-term basis, crude oil held above, it held above the 200-period moving average a week and a half ago. It's attempting to make higher highs and higher lows, that there's a chance that it tries at 97.61. If it can hold 93 as key support and break above yesterday's, close above yesterday's high of 99, round number 99.00 in the continuous contract, it says it could make a new leg B, a parallel leg B, above 100.99. I must be wrong about that. That must have been yesterday. Yeah, 99, yes. Okay, 99 was yesterday's high. So that's where we're looking at crude oil. Um, if there's any move in crude oil below 90, uh, 87, the 200 period exponential moving average, it just says forget it for now. That's going to hug. Crude oil is going to hug that 200 period moving average for a while. It can go up and down, but basically it's going to make a sine wave up and down that level. So it needs to get to the 102, 103 level very quickly to say it's now back on its way up. That's different to the natural gas, which pulled back sharply today, uh, but is that a spectacular move to the upside? It's a different pattern altogether. So I did that, I did that, did that. I wrote down the other things I wanted to look at here. Oh, gold. I said I'd look at gold. So gold is very interesting. Now it's unchanged. It's 1735. This is the moment that gold has to break above the high that was made in the 1756.3 in the continuous contract the 22nd of July. If gold can move to 1765 either Thursday or Friday, and on a weekly basis, close nicely above 1755. That'll be a sign that says the dollar, and now we're going to go to the currencies. It says that the dollar, okay, okay. it says that the dollar, which is down seven ticks right now at 1714, could start that move down. Now, I wanted to show you something very interesting. In the 120-minute chart, look at this. 120-minute chart, we had a peak A, B, C. Um, and that corresponds to the inverse of EUR, USD. Look at that beautiful. Now, I, I, I will talk about this just momentarily. This is called... I typed this in a long time ago, a 120-minute chart. I said, there's a Chapman Wave unconventional flat-based restart. It's a long terminology for a title, but the title explains the whole thing. Chapman Wave meaning it's my own particular formula that I developed. It isn't a flat-based restart that says sometimes you make after three bar, two to three bars after a peak D, you make a new high, and you pull back. You hold above the left side low, and then you start to make higher highs, but it keeps pulling back, but it does go much higher, and you get to another alternate count D. The unconventional flat base says very soon after you make your E, it's E slash A because within three bars you went above D, you pull back sharply, almost took out the left side low, and each rally above keeps coming back to that level. It's like this is a magnet, this little doji candle right here of 1.01242. Uh, that was on the 19th of July um, at 1 o'clock. That's a magnet. And it says at some point you're coming back, yeah? No matter what you do, just be careful. And I put it in pink and I said right there, back to base. Well, it went higher and higher and higher. When it was traveling up for two, two bars, 120-minute bars in the 1.02778 area, you thought, ah, come on, how can it? Well, look at this. The 200-period moving average became a repellent and a magnet at the same time. 
you had your sine wave over and over and under it, and eventually, what did it do? Plop, it's at 1.011. Isn't that another fantastic technique? All right, and it did the left side, right side price time match to the hour, to the hundred, to the exact hour. I chose that as the ball. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. If you don't think that arches and cups don't work all the time, look at this. We made a high at about 11 o'clock at, 30, at 39.80, maybe two. Pulls back, makes that cup arch formation, and then starts a brand new buy signal and goes to peak A, B. But underneath the previous high, this is all gray. It's gray A, gray B, gray C. It doesn't go to a full complete buy mode officially until it breaks by 25 cents above that. Well, now it's just gone to the exact high, and it's turned over, making a cup formation. Uh, the, and that is your left side, right side price time match. The exact number of bars on the left, with the, that's the quarter, that's the quarter of a semicircle. On the right, you get the boat right side of the of the of the uh, the, the quarter. And there it is. Doesn't make a D. Doesn't matter. The 9 is still over the 14 and still a positive thing. So anyway, these are the techniques that I like to use. We've gone through a chunk of stuff today. There's the euro. I was going to do. I'll do quickly. I'll do the uh, uh, USD JPY. This is the um, gone to a leg. It's recycled, gone to a G. 200 period moving average was resistance, and now it's become a support. And that's going together with the dollar. We'll see what happens. So we've got the Fed coming out today. 
This is A, B, C in the 120-minute uh, chart of the dollar. So folks, if the dollar, if the if the Dow is holding 90 or 100 points or more uh, after th say 245, that's really good action. There should be a decent close. If all of a sudden it's just only a 50 or even negative, that just hey, hold off. The Fed is making things making it a little nervous, but I think the Fed's going to be f pretty f steady, very firm but articulate, and, I, and that's a change. So that's the way we're looking at it, and I'm just going to wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Great programming coming up here, of course. And uh, this is Basil Chapman. My service here is the uh, <clears throat> is the Tiger Technicians Hour every day, 10 o'clock to 11 Eastern Time, and my service in the newsletter is the opening call. And as I say, we've got uh, at least two positions. One is up 8% 8 8 and the other, uh, other is up almost 8%. Day is young. By the end of the day, they might be down. You never know. But this is what we're doing, and we try our best for subscribers to give very nice positions as trades and positions to hold. Thanks for being here. And Larry, we wish you the best. Might like to you. Great programming coming up. Stay tuned. See you tomorrow.